Welcome everyone to another episode of the Real Estate Happy Hour. I'm ex I'm so excited because um, I haven't been on in a couple of weeks because I couldn't find anyone interesting to talk to and I couldn't find anything interesting to talk about. Real estate agents tend to, tend to talk about the same things and it's been very busy, houses are selling. So make sure you reach out to us if uh, you have any questions or concerns about buying real estate or selling real estate, we're happy to help you. But there is a certain young lady that actually caught my attention over the last few months. And the other day I just said, I gotta talk to this girl just to see, and if I, I don't mean to call her a girl, she's a woman. I gotta talk to this woman and see what the hell she's doing and how she's blowing up in the industry and everybody knows her. Like I thought I was good on social media and after just watching her and observing her, I'm actually learning a ton about her. And that person is Amanda Caldwell of Howard Hanna. Um, she's on the Katrina Roberti team. And I, I love Katrina Roberti too. We happened to work at the same brokerage years ago. So I think she has a really good leader, really good mentorship and someone that can grow her into a $20 million agent. So kudos to her and, and what's going on. But anyway, so just a little bit about Amanda. Amanda was actually born and raised in the state of Florida, and um, she's lived upstate for like the past decade with her husband and two children, and we'll talk a little bit about them in a little bit. She has a master's degree in educational leadership, spent the last 14 years um, serving the community through the educational field. Um, in her spare time, she enjoys you know, reading, hiking with her family, probably camping, but I'm, I'll ask her about that. Uh, she spends time on the lake, barbecues, and being creative. And she describes herself as energetic, that I can attest to, very enthusiastic and results driven. And I learned something about her family. Her husband is a pilot in the Air Force, and also he's a pilot for Delta Airlines. And I think that's pretty amazing. So let's bring her on. Let's welcome Katrina Roberti. I'm a, not Katrina Roberti. Amanda Caldwell. <laughs> I called you Katrina Roberti. Good start. Good start. I know, right? We're good to go. How you doing? I can call much worse. Call me Katrina all day. It's amazing. <laughs> <laughs> thank you for having me. And thank you for all the compliments. Girlfriend, you're you're an amazing agent. So we're going to talk about that. I do have a bone to pick with you. I didn't like you very much oh. this week. I didn't like you very much. I'm going to tell you oh. why. So on Monday, on Monday, I got, I think over the weekend, I decided to pull up my best of Zillow swag and I put it up. And then you jumped on my, jumped all over my post. Me too. I was oh, like, wait a minute. I didn't think to post. Oh, uh, I screw you. You don't need to post. <laughs> you get enough attention. I was like, you know, oh, you're me funny. too. Me too. I was like, eh. so then I said, you know, here's, here's my post. So this was just yesterday. I was like, I was all excited. My little we're 60 reactions. Huh? We're rooting for each other. Yeah, yeah. Oh, my little 60 God. reactions, my um, 17 comments. Uh oh. I tell you on Tuesday, where's your swag? Oh, I didn't put it up yet. <laughs> what the hell? You put yours yes, up a on it. Okay. You Here's put yours your up a day after, after me. You get 169 reactions, 82 comments. I didn't even look at it the day out of embarrassment. I was like, <laughs> I, I, you know, she's just crushed me. You oh, two people God. even shared yours. Only one person shared mine. But no, I'm just joking. But kudos to you because like mine just said, hey, three months running. That's kind of like a humble brag. You know, you had the wherewithal to not only at, you know do a call of action, which is amazing. Call me today if you'd like to help me with your real estate. And then you put your phone number. And those are the kind of things as an experienced agent like myself, I should know better. I should do stuff like that. But no, I just wanted to say, you know, kudos to you for doing that. And that is how you do social media. So I guess what I want to ask you, I want to start this conversation. Well, first of all, let me learn a little bit about you. You have two kids. What's their ages? Oh, I have two babies, Reagan and Lainey, and they are eight. Reagan's eight and mm -hmm. Lainey is six now. They both just had birthdays. I can't believe they're eight and six. Honestly, it feels weird to say it. 
Right. <laughs> you know. Time flies. Yeah, time. yeah. And your husband flies around the friendly skies. Sure does. He actually flew a Delta plane over the house the other day and he's like, go look for me. I'll be up at 715. I'm like, ah, That's so you can see him awesome. flying over us, which is crazy. And then he also flies for the Air Force and he does fly over sometimes. And that's like the coolest thing ever to see that plane fly over us. So it's pretty so you see, I have my, my veterans hat on. So thank him for his service. OK, will do. Thank you for yours. <laughs> thank you so much. So. Talk to me about social media. What did you do before real estate? So I was a teacher for 14 years. Mm -hmm. um, I taught in Florida initially. I lived there for about 28 years. And then I fell in love with my husband okay. and moved to cold New York. Um, and then I taught again once I moved here. Um, mm -hmm. And then my son was born. And I ended up having to take a few years off because um, there were complications after his birth. He got very sick and ended up with group B strep and meningitis and sepsis. So I almost lost him. We Oof. almost lost him. Um, but he, um, so he had lots of doctor's appointments and things like that, that we had to go to. So I took about three years off. Um, during that time, I also had my daughter. Right. And um, I went back to teaching and it happened to be the year that COVID happened. Mm. Uh, so, um, nothing's been the same since, um, I wasn't finding the same joy in it. Um, I wanted to be more available for my family with my mm -hmm. husband, you know, his schedules all over the place. So I needed to be able to go to doctor's appointments and school meetings and school functions and things like that. Um, and being a teacher, you would think that it would lend itself nicely to that, but mm -hmm. we are in. I was teaching in a different district than my kids go to school. So right. I did not have the flexibility that I really needed in order to be available for my family. So um, my husband and I kind of chatted about other options and he suggested real estate. And I looked at him like he was insane. I was like, <laughs> no, I'm not in sales. He's like, you sell makeup and you, you sold $40,000 in one year. Like, what do you wow. mean you can't do sales? I was like, I just, I don't, I don't know. And then I thought about it some more and honestly, the motivation was there. Mm -hmm. And I said, all right, well, I'm going to take the summer and I'm going to learn about real estate. I'm going to take the real estate course, see how I do. I was mm -hmm. super nervous and I studied very hard because I did not want to fail. Right. Um, I ended up passing the first time. Thankfully, I was nervous <laughs> thinking, oh God, I'm going to have to take this again. I was worried about the math part, but it worked out great. Awesome. Uh, so that's yeah. kind of like uh, when you took your driver's test at 16 or 17, like, I want to pass the first time. <laughs> yeah, I want to have to do this again. So, yeah, I started doing real estate in the middle of September and ended up with uh, close to a million dollars in contract by the end of the year. And then none of those closed until January. And I had five closings in January. So and I've had nine total closings. And I have eight pending right now. And I put an offer in today. So fingers crossed. <laughs> wow. It's so wow, exciting. Wow. It. Wow. It is exciting. So tell me about your, 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 your social media presence. Like how have you been able to activate that? Because you were on it and we tell a lot of new agents um, in this industry. Now we always tell people, listen, some people always go, I got to do so much more social media. And I go, you know what? If you're not comfortable with it, don't do it because you're going to come off as inauthentic. You're not going to look real. But the people that do do it like yourself, um, not patting myself on the back, but I do it a lot. The people that are good at social media just do it well. And because it's, it's a comfort level with them. Talk to me about that. Is that something you had to learn or were you just always comfortable with the camera? How, tell me about so that. I have not always been comfortable and I'm still truly not comfortable. Mm. Um, and, but I was, I started that makeup business and I had a private group where I would go live and mm. it was how I connected with women. Okay. Um, I went through a couple of, um, rough years after being a stay at home mom and I mm. needed connection, but then COVID and nobody was leaving their house. So right. that was my way to connect. And I learned mm. a ton through my makeup business right. about how to connect, what types of posts people are wanting to see, um, mm -hmm. you know, reaching out through messenger, not just posting, you've got to be actually in people's messenger or they're not going to see your posts. So I've learned a lot through that business. Um, and so I just carried that on to my regular page where I didn't normally post as much. Um, but then I started to, once I started real estate so that more people knew that I was doing real estate and would reach out to me and, um, hopefully trust me to help guide them through their purchase of a home or the sale, sale of their home. So, 
Well, you're doing it. Um, and by the way, if you happen to be watching, when, what happens with these these uh, live videos is some people are working and they don't have a lot of time to actually stop and watch the whole hour. But if you happen to be stopping by, say hello to us. Um, say hello to Amanda. Just let us know you're here. Give us a thumbs up or a heart or something like that. Some type of reaction. God knows that Amanda gets lots of reactions. <laughs> yeah. Uh, um, yeah. So, yeah. So the social media piece, I, I think you have that. Uh, the numbers that you just threw out to me were amazing. Uh, some people don't realize it that like when you're in your first year real estate, that can be the hardest time of your life in any work field, but it's, it can also be the most rewarding, right? Mm -hmm. We face a lot of rejection. We face a lot of what the hell's going on. We face a lot of, I don't know what to expect. It's just a lot of uncertainty in our industry. And so when you bust out the gates like you have, um, kudos to you. But uh, what what surprised you the most about your first few months as an Asian agent? Like, what did you see September to December that you was like, I don't either. I don't know I can do if I can do this or I'm going to crush this. What which, which reaction did you have? I really didn't give myself the option of failing. I mm. said, I'm going to do this because I knew I didn't want to go back to the, the classroom that I was in. Right. So I said, I'm going to be successful. And I listened to Katrina because mm. she knows what she's talking about. She's got the track record. She is successful. She knows what she's talking about. She is very purposeful and clear and has strategies that she uses that, you know, and She's got systems and I just listened as much as I could and did as much as I could. And I, I, I always listened to podcasts while I was doing my makeup, while I was taking a bath, while I was in the shower, literally just like letting it consume my brain so that I could learn as much as I could, as fast as I could, because it is a lot of information. And I had heard that it's very difficult to get, um, to be successful your first year. And I knew that I needed to make a certain amount of money in order for my husband to, to continue to support me. Mm -hmm. um, so that was my goal and I'm on track for meeting my goal. Thankfully. <laughs> That's amazing. So that, that, yeah. Yeah. I mean, yeah, I, I'll, I'll stop complimenting you because your head will swell anyway. <laughs> oh my God. Um, yeah, it, was, it was a lot of hard work. It was a lot of like, and I'm not somebody that, um, well, I think COVID caused me to use the phone a lot less and we mm -hmm. text all the time. So I was very nervous to make those phone calls. And Katrina right. was like, Amanda, you're natural on the phone. I don't know what you're afraid of, mm -hmm. but I was, I was very much nervous to pick up the phone. And I just mm -hmm. had to like put all my fears aside because I was afraid of also that no, everybody's afraid of being told no. And I'm, I'm still afraid of being told no. But um, I've learned through a lot of my trainings, I've heard a lot of different people that are successful in the business say you need to know a lot of people so that they can know you. It's okay to be known because you're going to get more yeses the more no's you get. hundred so. percent. And, and, and it's, yeah. it's funny, we talked about, believe it or not, I didn't get really comfortable on the phone until a few years ago. And I had been doing this for a while, but it wasn't, I wasn't afraid of rejection. I've been in sales the majority of my work life. I was afraid of not saying the right things or being prepared to answer the right questions, right? Yeah. So I was always like psyching myself out. What if they ask me this? Or what if they ask me that? And now am I going to respond? I don't want to sound like an idiot. So I was more afraid of those type uh, scenarios. And then after a while, I, was, I thought, just have conversations with people, you know? Mm -hmm. you, you don't have to be the scholar uh, of real estate to make it work. So yeah, good. Um, so you talked about Katrina as being a, an amazing resource. What other resources or training from your brokerage have, has been the most helpful to you? In the beginning, when I started at Howard Hanna, um, they did what's called a fast start training. And yeah. I went to the office, I want to say between four and six different times for different trainings. So they mm -hmm. teach you how to fill out the contract. Um, they teach you how to use showing time to schedule showings. Um, I can't remember all the different things they taught us, but right. they taught us all, all kinds of different skills that we needed, um, tools that were available to us. Um, and they had successful agents come in and present to us and teach us different things that have helped them. Mm -hmm. um, so that was helpful. Christian, who is the manager at my office in Vail Mills, he mm -hmm. did some trainings with us as well. And he's a great resource. He's highly motivated and he has lots of really, really good ideas. And he is very much high energy. If you want to talk about high energy, Oh, I that know man. Christian. Christian knows me. I know, I know he does his hockey rink in his, in his, at his house. Yes, he has a hockey rink. 
Oh my gosh. And he runs like a ridiculous amount. Like he's just got so much energy energy, and he's got great ideas. So Mm -hmm. he fills out this sheet, win the day. Um, I haven't quite started it, but I do have goals and I do revisit my goals a lot. Um, I have a tracker on my phone. It's just a little app and it knows it it has in there how much money I want to make, how close I am to my goal, Mm -hmm. um, how much further I have to go, things like that on there. So I just, I always track my goals. I think it's important for everybody to track their goals, whether it's a weight goal or a, you know, financial goal, whatever the, the goal is, I think it's important to track it. So every time you say something that's that's wise, I'm going to reiterate it a little bit or expound on it. Um, but um, almost every brokerage has training resources and and you know classes and you know like you said the same things you mentioned, but you actually make use of them. Like you've taken advantage of them, right? So that's that's would you say that's the key? Like yeah, it's, and and being that you have an educational background, you can hand someone a book. It doesn't mean they're going to read it, right? You know, everything you need to know is book and I read it and I look back at it Mm -hmm. to try and, you know, reiterate some of the important points in that book. And it's all about getting referrals and giving that great customer service so that, you know, they refer you to the next person. And that's how you keep your business going is by referrals. So, um, yes, you got to use the skills you're you're given. (laughs) Exactly. So how are you building your client base right now? So um, uh, through Facebook, I get a lot of people that matter. I think you froze. Come back, come back. She'll be back. Her camera froze. She has a funny face right now. But so I want to talk a little bit about what she was saying about the resources. So a lot of brokerages do have uh, a lot of resources. And by the way, if you can hear me, Amanda, sometime you might need to log out and log back in. Um, Yeah, come back in. And I'll just keep talking. She'll be back. So anyway, yeah, a lot of brokerages do have the resources and we want to make sure um, that we use them. You there? Yes. I don't That's know okay. if that was my fault or what happened. That's but... okay. No, worries. she's back. So go ahead. So what, oh, I was, I was asking about your client base. So how do you build your client base? I told you this is real life. So being live, yeah. things like that happen. <laughs> a plane may come through my window. You just never know. So anyway, so so go ahead, building your client base. Talk to me about that. So a lot of um, referrals come from Facebook and from my husband, friends that I have also Mm -hmm. through Zillow. We get Zillow calls uh, through my team. So I take those calls as well. Um, I also take office hours and I've gotten a lot. I've gotten listings through sitting, just being at the office and working at the office and not sitting at home working. Um, So I get phone calls that way. I think that's a really good way to get you know, clients too. Um, I have two listings, fingers crossed that should be coming up. And um, that's through just the phone call at Howard Hanna. So I, I like, I like what yesterday, I mean, the other day was, I forgot what day it was. We were texting. You were like, all right, got to go. I got a listing appointment. And I liked it a couple hours later, you came back texting me like, got it. I was like, of yeah. course you got it. <laughs> that was pretty <laughs> awesome. Um, so <clears throat> here's the thing about getting leads. Cause some people, think that like getting um, internet leads are cheat is cheating. But I always say, first of all, internet leads like Zillow, Realtor, whatever the case may be, they should only supplement your business. You shouldn't really rely on them for your business or for the health of your business. <clears throat> but even bigger, you have to convert them, mm-hmm. right? You got to convert them. You got to make them cash. So yeah, there's nothing wrong with, and like I'm, I very proudly say I'm the best of Zillow just like you, but (laughs) that means that you're picking up your phone, you're answering the phone, you're answering those questions of people who call and, and at the end of the call, they, yeah, I want to work with you. I want to meet you. I'd love to see that house with you. As long as you're qualifying the customers and you know, when you're wasting your time and when you're not, and you're converting them into cash, um, there's nothing like getting a boatload of, uh, internet leads and not converting them. Cause then you're going to go, it doesn't work. Right. Mm-hmm. You know, that doesn't work. Now, are you focusing on a special need, uh, a specific niche? Like, do you, is there a per- certain part of real estate that you really want to get good at being a listing person, a buyer's agent, commercial, multifamily investors love, or whatever? I would love more listings. I seem to get a lot of investors, people that want to buy multifamilies. Mm-hmm. Um, so I've been showing a lot of those. I don't really know that there's 
one specific area and I get a lot of lake buyers too because the lake is close to where we're at. Um, so I have a list of all my lake buyers in a Google spreadsheet and mm -hmm. um, I send them everything I can as soon as it comes available because you know those lake properties go quick. <laughs> right, right. Yeah, I don't know. I, I would love to do more around the lake, um, mm -hmm. build my clientele and get more around the lake, but I think everybody does too. So yeah, um, it can be a little bit more competitive in that area. So. so you came into the industry in a seller's market. So this is all you know, right? I think that's yep. amazing because um, when and if it ever becomes a buyer's market and houses are sitting on, you know, when I came into the industry, the average days on market was close to 90. Ooh. Can you imagine well. like houses literally set for two and three months at a time and people took their time. It kind of sucked because they were like, all right, well, Amanda, let me go home and think about it. Talk about it with my dad, talk about it with my husband. And it just dragged on and on. They could literally call you three weeks later and go, can we go take a second look at that house? <laughs> oh my goodness. No, I literally brought a written contract to a showing. Yeah. Oh my God. That's and awesome. they signed it at the showing because it, it's, they're going so fast and she's lost out on multiple houses and she's like, yeah. just bring it ready. It's like, okay, so, I'm ready so for you. You kind of answered my question, which I was going to ask you, what's your approach to navigating the seller's market? Tell me about some of the techniques you have, some of the things you, you do, because obviously if you're selling and you're having the production that you're having in this market, you're doing something very unique. It's very special. What are some of the techniques you use besides taking contracts to showings? Oh my goodness. Um, I don't know. I just try yeah. to make sure that I'm communicating constantly to make sure that I know exactly what my buyer is looking for so that I'm showing them the house that they actually, that makes sense for what they're looking for. And right. Right. Um, I've been working really hard on adjusting criteria too, for some of them, because they, mm -hmm. some of them don't really know what they want, you know, right. sending me multifamily or single family, you know, you're not sure what you're looking for. Um, so just trying to hone in on exactly what they're looking for and making mm -hmm. them a little bit more realistic. Um, and then I teach them, you know, from the very beginning, the different things that are going to come up, you know, when we do make an offer, the ways that we can make our offer look stronger, um, you know, up the threshold, have a higher EMD, um, obviously price of the home, the type of loan that you're going to have, mm -hmm. things like that, teaching them throughout the process so that when it's time they're ready and they don't have to learn the contract right then. Right. So um, one of the biggest struggles for new agents is technology. And I think you have a grasp on that. Are you, yeah. do you find that you're able to adapt to the technology fairly quickly? Yeah, I don't, I don't have any issues really with the technology. Mm -hmm. Um, Sometimes, okay, so in the beginning, when I first started with Howard Hanna, they do have a lot of online tools that you can yeah. use. And that was overwhelming. And then we had our own tools that we used as a team. Mm -hmm. yeah. So learning all of those systems and what goes in that system and at one, what point in the process it goes into that system, mm -hmm. those things were hard to get used to initially. And I still, every once in a while, they check in with me because I haven't submitted something that they need or, you know, I need to add something to my um, document online and they have to check in. But um, overall, I'm getting the hang of it. But there's definitely a lot of different systems to learn. <laughs> what tech tools have you taken advantage of outside of, of what Howard Hanna offers? Like, are you on Canva? Do you have any other technologies yeah. that you use for your marketing and stuff like that? Canva and um, I use it for videos and for um, just graphics to put online. Um, it's amazing. You can also use it to make like a checklist or a spreadsheet. Mm -hmm. It was something that I used when I was a teacher as well. So it was easy to transition to using it for real estate. And it has, you know, they have all kinds of templates for different things. Um, mm -hmm. I made a flow chart for one of my clients before just to show them what the process is of making, mm -hmm. you know, an offer. Right. Um, but yeah, the technology, um, it can be overwhelming in the beginning, but you definitely get used to it. And the more you use it, the mm -hmm. better you become. So um, you, you said the word spreadsheet a couple of times since we've been talking. Do you, is that your CRM? You, you've created a spreadsheet or do you use a CRM as well? We have we don't use a CRM, but we use a Google document to keep track of our leads. Mm. Um, and we type all kinds of different information in there to help us keep track of them and remember what the last conversation was, when we need to check right. back with them, what their budget is. 
the types of loans, things like that. We add different things to that document to kind of help keep us organized and going back to the, you know, and I, I color code it too by, you know, this buyer is um, ready to buy green. If they're, they're looking, but they don't seem like they're quite ready to buy, they would right. be a yellow. Um, there's just different colors for different levels of readiness for the clients. And I kind of prioritize that way because you have to prioritize. I've got so many buyers on that sheet. I couldn't even, I couldn't do them all at once, obviously. Right, so I have to right. prioritize them by who's, you know, who's ready and knows what they want. So Awesome. Great, great. Uh, so um, from a client focus, like what, what are some of the biggest challenges you've been facing working with first time home buyers? I'm sure you see a lot of those. Yes. So, um, you know, trying to find a house within certain budgets can be mm -hmm. challenging, mm -hmm. um, especially when you've got a loan like an FHA loan or a VA loan. Those can be challenging if you're at the lower end of the price range. So between one hundred and one hundred and thirty thousand dollars, they can be challenging to find a home that is going to meet the criteria for the appraisal. Right. Um, so I've, I've got one right now. and We've got some issues that came up with the home that have to be fixed in order for it to have the appraisal pass and mm -hmm. for us to, be able to close. Um, so, yeah, that can be a little bit challenging, but we find ways to make it work. That's so. awesome. So, mm -hmm. like, tell me about it's been eight months. What, what tell me about a very, you know, rewarding experience that, you, that you've had so far with clients, it's like the, the stuff that makes your heart melt. That just like, this is why I do this. So I had a friend that when a friend or somebody that knows me well reaches out and wants me to help guide them through the home buying process, mm -hmm. that to me is, or if a friend sends someone to me, that to me is the biggest compliment ever because it means that they know me and they still trust me and right. trust me to know, because you know a lot of their financial information whenever you are True. working with someone to right. buy a home. And mm -hmm. to trust me with that information and to find them the home and to get them to that finish line is huge. Um, so I had a friend that reached out to me and she is going through a, a rough time and I'm not going to give too many details, but she and her daughter were able to purchase their first home together. And mm -hmm. I get teary eyed talking about it. <laughs> I'm just so happy that she was able to do that for her daughter and herself. Um, right. That's a big deal to be able to purchase a home on your own. Um, without another supplemental income, that to me is like a really big deal. So that's great. So hey guys, if you have any questions for Amanda and you want to know how she does it, or if you say, I was thinking about getting my license, jump in, don't be scared. She's telling you that the ward is warm. It's a great pool for everyone. So, so how do you build trust? Tell me, talk about how you build trust and rapport with clients, um, especially those that are new to the process and they might know that you're new too, but obviously you overcome that hurdle pretty, pretty quickly. How do you do that with the trust and rapport? So I just make sure I listen and pay attention to um, what they're saying and what's important to them. Mm -hmm. um, like for my friend, she wanted something, you know, that would be special for her and her daughter. And she wanted to be in a certain area so that her daughter could continue to be um, in the school that she was already in. And so I just made sure I listened. I knew that, that that was important to her. So I always kept the two of them in my mind and what her goals were. Mm -hmm. um, and I'm a, I happen to be a very empathetic person, probably, probably a little bit too much at times because it can stress me out and my like heart breaks when somebody doesn't get their offer accepted. I'm like, I don't want to make this phone call. Can somebody else do it? <laughs> Um, but yeah, like I just really genuinely care about my clients and I think they just feel that. And I always check in with them. You know, I've had clients that I've been working with for months and one of them, she called me and she said, you know, I, I can't look anymore right now. I got to take a break. I wanted to call and just let you know, yeah, um, I'm having surgery. My daughter's having surgery. And I'm like, listen, it's okay. I'm glad you called me and told me that it's, you're not hurting my feelings. Like this mm -hmm. is totally fine. And I sent them a card and told them, you know, good luck with your surgery. I continue to check in with them to make sure they're recovering nicely. Just paying attention to those things that are happening. You know, I had another, I had a listing and his daughter got sick and I made sure that I was checking in on his daughter almost daily just to make sure that, and it's not because I'm trying to play a game, you know, I, I legitimately right. care about these people and I want to know that they're okay. So I think that people just sense that and they know when I send these personal messages or call, mm -hmm. you know, to check on their family members that have something going on that, you know, I really do care about them and I'm paying attention and listening. 
to bug That's him. awesome. So what you about, about the in your basement and now there's something <laughs> flying around me. Oh yeah, the bee, the bee. <laughs> I don't know what what about, um those uh complex like sometimes you 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 need um you have these really complex real estate concepts that you might need to explain to con uh, clients, especially the analytical ones. Um, how, how do you navigate those? How, how have you been effective with that? You know, sometimes I create some type of a visual. Um, mm. and sometimes I just, honestly, I'm on a team for a reason and Katrina is a huge resource for me. So sometimes we'll just get on a, like a kind of like a conference call with the client and she mm. will kind of help, you know, answer questions for things right. that I'm not necessarily well versed in. Also, I get a lot of questions, um, regarding loans and, mm. I refer them to the lender a lot. Um, I don't want to answer something wrong. And we've been taught, you know, even in the course and throughout, you know, the process of the last 18 transactions or whatever, um, not to answer some of those questions. Like we need to refer them to the lawyer. The lawyer, you know, answers certain things and the lender answers certain things. And then I can answer the other things. 100%. But I try to answer things I'm not qualified to answer. <laughs> Use your vendor partners as resources. Yes. Yeah. Your yep. inspector, your lender, if you know an appraiser, I, I I call the same appraiser two appraisers all the time. Say I'm about to list this house. What's your what's what you're thinking on it? So sometimes I even get market price ideas when I'm listing. So if you can meet any any and 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 um, you definitely want to like network with them and get to know them. So that's that's a good plan because you are going to come across some very complex questions from people. And it's good to have resources that can answer them for you. Um, and I was going to say that too, like when you start doing real estate, you need to build relationships with all of the people, not yeah. just, not just the, you know, the inspector and the appraiser, like mm -hmm. the people you're working in the office with that you're going to be doing deals with, yes. build relationships with them and learn from them. I have asked questions to people in the office many times and most of the time they are willing to openly share with you what right, they've learned right, right. in the years of their experience. So that's definitely important to build relationships with other realtors mm -hmm. um, in the business that have been successful. Great, great. So what are the, uh, a lot of new agents, they run into this. What are some of the common, you know, misperceptions or misconceptions about real estate in the industry? People ask you questions and when you answer them, they go, really? <laughs> Yeah, people think it's um, you just drive around and you show houses yeah. <laughs> and that it's a lot more simple that it is mm -hmm. than it is. Um, I have, you know, I didn't know much about real estate at <clears throat> all. I right. came into this. So I learned a ton. There's a lot of things that happen behind the scenes that you don't even know about. Your right. realtor is taking care of things that you don't know about. They're putting those fires out before. Mm -hmm you have even a clue that there's something even wrong. Yeah, <laughs> and you may never know because you don't need to know. We don't want you to panic. We're gonna fix it before it becomes an actual issue. Okay. So there's things like that. And there's paperwork that's happening behind the scenes. There's communication mm -hmm. behind, you know, behind the scenes with lawyers and appraisers and lenders and everybody else. There's a lot of people involved in the whole process and right. people don't realize that that's a misconception. Yeah, and it's a big one. Um, when I see forums or I see um, YouTube videos and people are blasting real estate agents and say, we're worthless, we don't deserve the money, I don't get mad at them because they really don't understand what we do day to day, you know? Um, mm -hmm. and, but for that same reason, I don't bash other industries that I know nothing about as well, right, exactly. you know? Because you don't know what they're doing behind the scenes. Um, you don't know what their life balance is like, anything like that. So you really have to give them grace until you understand exactly what they do. And you can ask them, what do you do? Tell me about your career and what you do. Mm -hmm. And that gives us a, a chance to explain about, you know, why we earn the money we can earn in this business. Real estate agents can be very broke or we could be very wealthy, <laughs> right? Yep. You know, you get back um, out of it what you put into it. Um, what advice would you give someone who's considering a career in our business? Hmm, that's a good question. Um, definitely, I would recommend doing something like what I did, where I met with Katrina before I made the decision. Mm -hmm. I went to an open house. I listened to some podcasts. Um, I think I even attended a meeting, um, a team meeting with Katrina before I made the decision. 
um, to get into real estate because I honestly had not a clue what I was getting into. And mm -hmm. I had a lot of questions and curiosities before I made such a big decision because I had to take a leave from work um, in order to start doing real estate. So yeah. I would yeah. recommend doing as much research as you can. Um, you need to have money saved up because it's rough in the beginning. You need to have, a, I don't know, there is like a formula that, you know, you need to have a certain amount of money saved up in order to do it. But I don't know what that is because I was lucky enough. My husband made enough that we were able to like survive. Yeah. Yeah. You will be in survival mode for a long time because even if you get a deal together early in your career, it's still going to take two months to close, mm -hmm. 45 days to two months to close. You don't know. So you definitely, and it, you're going to be, depending on where you um, start your career, whether it's Howard Hanna or another brokerage, you are going to be splitting some of your money with, you know, your team or your broker. So you've yeah. got to keep that in mind too. So you're not making that full commission mm -hmm. um, from the deal. So you definitely have to weigh the pros and the cons. Think about your evenings and weekends. Um, while <laughs> I like my, I like my schedule, believe it or not, I like this schedule better than I liked the teacher schedule because there was just no flexibility there. Mm -hmm. Whereas with this, I'm working more. I'm working evenings, I'm working weekends. I, you know, I'm, I've constantly got messages coming through and phone calls and emails, but it's okay because when I need to take a day to get something done, or if I need to shift my schedule around a little bit, it's, it's doable. So right. it's, but definitely keep in mind, you will be using your, your nights, your weekends to show houses and things like that. So take It's funny calls. because if, if you work a 40 hour a week job, right? And you mm -hmm. have to be there Monday through Friday, eight to five, or whatever. And then you work a real estate career and you work 50 to 60 hours, but you can just take Wednesday afternoon from three to six, whenever you want. Isn't that mm -hmm. more like flexible and more rewarding than having to be someplace from eight to five? You know what I mean? It's great. Yeah. yeah. And then for me, having two small kids, my husband travels a lot, yeah. um, things that build up around the house. And if I work all day on Saturday, mm -hmm. but then I can take half of Wednesday to catch up with the things I need to catch up with, yeah. that's what I do. Whatever I need to do, I can adjust my schedule so that I can keep up. Not that I really keep up that well. I do my best. <laughs> <laughs> I do my best. Don't ask my husband how well I keep right. up. But. <laughs> um, looking back, and you it hasn't been a full year for you, um, but looking back, is there anything that you would have done differently in your first year? And if not, that's fine. Not really. I mean, honestly, I feel like it all kind of worked out the way it was meant to. I am really um, happy that I had the relationship. Um, I, I knew Katrina's husband before I knew Katrina, obviously, because mm -hmm. I taught at Wheelerville, which is where her husband used to be the superintendent. So I had a relationship with him and I knew that his wife left teaching to become a real estate agent. So that was my avenue to like get some information. Um, so it honestly, it, everything just falls into place. I just feel like there's always a plan. God has a plan and everything happens for a reason. All those connections happen for a reason. And I, I, I am happy with the way everything has turned out. The rule of thumb about jumping, because I too jumped in this industry um, blindly. Um, I lost my job with then Time Warner Cable. And I think I was on at the time, it wasn't Indeed that was popular. It was a career, build, career builder. And one day I'm looking at, I'm, I'm putting my resume up. I'm getting all these emails from these companies. And I was just like, what the hell are you doing? Like, why are you going right back to those salt mines? <laughs> mm -hmm. You know? And I said, I'm going to get my real estate license. So I was um, getting unemployment. I decided to get my license and I got it very quickly. I called Keller Williams at the time and said, I need to, I want to be a real estate agent. And I said, one thing though, no. I don't have a lot of money saved. I need to sell right away. <laughs> what they say. <laughs> they were like, <laughs> you better go get a job at Stewart's or something. <laughs> But anyway, no, my, po that income somehow. my point was, I think I was a, a, um, a fast starter because I needed money. So I feared nothing. I mean, I had a mentor 
who told me do this, this, that, and this, and I did this, this, that, and this. Like, I was like, what else do I need? Like, whatever she told me to do, she's like, this is going to be your fast track to getting your sales. So um, I, like you, in my first 12 months, I was able to sell like 12 or 13 houses. Um, and people were like, oh my God, you're crushing. And I was like, I don't have a choice, right? You know, right. I, I motivation. Know. That's what I was saying earlier. Yeah. Like the motivation is there. Right. If the right. motivation is there, the drive mm -hmm. is going to be there too. So you're just going to yeah. work until. Yeah. So, um, if we, if you had, I mean, if you had, if someone called you after this podcast and go, oh my God, Amanda, I saw your podcast. It was amazing. I want to be a real estate agent. What are you going to tell them? First thing. Pump the brakes. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> uh, I would probably say, how much money do you have saved up? <laughs> right. Um, how much research have you done? Mm -hmm. um, I would probably tell them about the course that I took and how long it took me to take it. Um, right. And I would tell them probably to... Um, know well i can tell you it would be a good I start why what is your why why what do you is your do? why all right i think it would be a good start to gonna become rich overnight that's not gonna happen <laughs> i think you know what's so funny when people are thinking about becoming a real estate agent or they knew in the industry they talk to seasoned agents who forgot they've been in so long they forgot what it was like when they started they also might have started when the industry or the market was different Mm -hmm. I think it's almost better to talk to someone who just recently started. Yeah. That's a good See? point. Right. Because if, if someone may go, why are you talking to her? She's only been an agent for a year. He'd be like, that's the one you want to talk to because <laughs> right. They're the one who, who's just the going. Course. To. Yep. The course is a 77 hour course. Mm -hmm. It took me a lot longer than that because I took my time. My husband's like, you're thinking too hard. Like you don't have to work that hard. It's going to be fine. I'm like Brandon, I want to understand the content. I don't want to have to take the test again. Mm -hmm. And I don't want to look like a fool when I'm out there trying to sell houses and I don't know what I'm doing. Right. So I'm going to do, I sat down all summer and I really worked hard. It probably took me double the amount of time that it should have to take the course, but I was able to pass the test and I felt comfortable and confident ish. I wasn't super confident, but I, you know, I felt better about the job that I had done to finish the course and the knowledge mm -hmm. that I had than if I had rushed through it. So and just think, in a few, uh, in another year, you can take your broker's license. Oh boy! I yeah, I don't be know. All over that. <laughs> um, long term goals. What are your long term goals as a real estate agent? Long term goals. Um, my husband and I. Can I talk about our goals? Hundred <laughs> percent. I want to make enough money to, or be, you know, to be able to purchase pay off this house that we live in, which we don't really have that much more because we've been paying more on the mortgage um, each month than we have to. Um, but we also want to buy lake house. We really, really, really want a lake house. And I know there's a lot of people that want a lake house. Um, we started looking before COVID and we yeah. thought we were ready and then COVID happened and the prices just went, Whoa. we're like, okay, that's not happening for a while. So, and then I left my career and you know, so there's been some little hiccups but that is our, our biggest goal is to purchase a lake house. And it doesn't have to be anything spectacular. We could, you know, just do a camp for right now, tear it down and rebuild eventually when we have enough money. Um, but I want to make enough money for us to be comfortable and not um, stressing over certain bills and be able to go on vacations, you know, things like that. Spend time with the family and um, visit Florida more often to see my family since I was yeah. born and raised. I would love to go there more often, but, what, and actually now he flies for Delta. So now I can, but there you go. What part of Florida are you from? Near Tampa. Oh, okay. Near Tampa. Area is called Brandon and my okay. husband's name is Brandon. So kind of funny, funny fact. It is. Fun fact. <laughs> um, three months, three months of um, expenses should be saved before you start. There three is. months or more, but really right. no less than three. Did I do that? Of course not, but, but that's the goal is to save up three months of expenses. Now, if you're in a, um, if you're in a two income home, um, it could be less, but if you are like a single mother, single father, you live on your own three months of expenses. So if your expenses are 8,000 a month, you should try and save about $24,000 who can save $24,000 in this economy, right? 
It's really you need groceries, right? <laughs> you need something. <laughs> Uh, what would you say um, is the most valuable lesson you've learned so far? Most valuable. And that could be a lesson in life, real estate, motherhood, being a wife. What is the most valuable lesson you've learned so far since you've been doing mm -hmm. real estate? That no, ma no matter what, your family is the most important thing. Mm. So, um, you said in life too, right? So yeah. that's, yeah. I mean... I was in education and I felt like my family was missing out on time with me and I was missing out on time with them. Mm -hmm. And um, that's why I chose to make the the switch and I have zero regrets and I would have regret, regrets if I didn't have the time that I have with my kids now. So, so while I work hard and you know, I'm working more hours, I'm still able to spend valuable time with my family. And that was the most important thing. Right. So we have goals. Um, we have, uh, business goals uh, and your, your, your goal is to be a $6 million agent. You told me that. And then it's going oh, to be you're telling everybody. <laughs> it's okay. That's amazing. Well, first I of all, that's a crazy if, goal. no, if you could become a, no, it's, it, it's a lofty goal. It's not crazy. If you can become a $6 million agent in your first um, full year, let's say January to December, because you have a piece of one and then you're in the first full year. So, Let's say that's not that's not 2024, but 2025, you become a $6 million agent. And then your next goal is going to be 10 or 12, and the next is going to be 18 or 20, whatever. One thing that you're going to have to learn is that you're going to, we, you just talked about family being very important. So you're going to have mm -hmm. to learn how to set boundaries, right? And still meet your goals, correct? And yeah. I think you're going to find that as a challenge. I'm telling yeah. you stuff you already know, but I just wanted to put that out there for the watchers, the listeners, that when you increase your goals, those boundaries become harder and harder to maintain. Would you agree definitely. with that? Right? Oh yeah. I can definitely yeah. see that. So um Katrina did teach me something that so she and I had been talking and I was telling her, I'm so stressed out, my phone's going crazy. And she's like, what do you mean? Like what's going on? Who's calling you? What's going on? I'm like, I just get text messages all the time, like 24-7. I'm always my phone goes buzz, 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 buzz. I was like, I can't even read a book to my kids without having my phone buzz, buzz, buzz. And then I'm like stressed out because I just feel like I have to answer it right now. Yep. No, you don't. It can mm -hmm. wait. She taught me to just mute my text message notifications. And when I look at my phone for any other reason, there's the text messages. I don't need those alerts to be constantly dinging and driving me crazy. And the reading, I need to put my phone away when I'm reading to my kids at night. And I'm still not great about it because I am very much like I want to deal with an issue when it comes up and not wait. I want to just get it done. But I, I'm learning that like, this is important right now. I need to read to my kids and then I can deal with that after we're done. I'm learning. I'm, I'm going to tell you a story. So, and, and, and this could happen to you because you're brilliant, but what's going to happen is like, so after eight or nine years in, in real estate, someone had offered me a lucrative position outside of real estate and I took it. I was like, wow. Okay. So as long as I can make the same amount of money, I tried. It wasn't for me. I got out of it and came back to real estate. I was gone full time from real estate for about eight to nine months. And I came back and I had to start all over again. Everyone oh. had forgotten me. Right? Oh. No, uh, no. That What I'm telling you is when you leave and, and people out there who's watching this, they know when you leave and you decide to do something else, you're going to lose customers. You're going to find out some of your best customers have bought a half million dollar home. And you're like, why didn't you call me? You'd be like, I thought you were out of real estate. Like, so... You have to, you, you don't start all over, but here's what I learned. I learned that first of all, you now this time when you restart, you have all of the knowledge and experience from when you did it before. Okay. Mm -hmm. So it's not as hard to ramp back up. Like I ramped back up just like that. Boom, 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 boom. Like it was amazing. But you also learn how much you miss it. And then you go into it with more fire and desire, right? Uh, yeah. But what I did forget, and I'm still struggling with now, is I forgot about maintaining and managing my boundaries. Because yes. I was so mad at myself for releasing the thing that I love, which is real estate, that I was like, I lost customers. I lost business. People forgot about me. They're buying with other people. What's going on? So I have um, I have to get my boundaries back and and do like you said, put the phone down, not 
think I thinking I have to answer every call, every text, you know, vacation times coming up. I want to be able to go on vacation and have a real one, you know, mm -hmm. and not mm -hmm. have to actually pick up every call or answer every text while I'm on vacation because people come back from vacation. And um, Kathy Cooley said it best. You know, Kathy Cooley, Howard Hanna, right? Have you met her? Yep. Okay. I haven't met her, I don't think, but I do know that name. Make make um, make it your job to meet her. She's okay, an amazing right individual, right. especially since she's at your company. She, she's one of the people that I watch from afar. And if she's watching this, I'm not sucking up. I just really admire her. But she said in her life in real estate, um, she has, even on vacation or even time off, she has a comfortable relationship with her phone and with her customers and her emails that she does it when she wants to. But for other people, they may look at that and go, that's even too much. Right. But mm -hmm. you have to do what's comfortable for you. You have to do what, whatever your boundaries may be. You set them, you maintain them, if that makes sense. Right. All right. Mm -hmm. We're almost at the end. And I want to do some fun and, fun and engaging questions. Um, what's the most creative way you've marketed a property since you're listing homes? Most creative. Hmm. Yeah. Well, I mean, I don't know if it's super creative, but I just make I go into the property and I make a video and um, I go into Canva and I can mm -hmm. drop the logo and I can add some words. But I just had my daughter with me um, and I uh, did a video about the property that we were able to get under contract pretty quickly. And mm -hmm. then I had my daughter standing next to me and I just took like two seconds and I scanned out to her and she's got her sunglasses on and she's just going like this. So I just made a reel with her doing that being, you know, silly laney. Um, yeah. But yeah, I think just like doing videos, people want to see us. They want to hear us talking and they, right. you know, the, it's engaging for them. Um, but other than that, I don't know if I have any like super creative ways of. The public loves good parents and pets. Yes, pets. <laughs> right? Any way you can incorporate parenting and pets into your marketing, it works. Yeah, we, we're pimping our kids, but. <laughs> she, just, she was on it on her own, to be completely honest. And I was like, you know, this would be really funny in my video. So I went ahead and I used it. I was like, this is perfect. And she loved it too. She kept watching herself on my phone. I'm like, oh my gosh. Okay. I went, uh, so on this next, next, next question, I'm going to put you on the spot and I'm going to put the other person that you're going to mention on the spot. What relation, what, what person outside of your broker have you built the best relationship with? What other realtor? Say their name mm -hmm. and let us know who they are and why. Uh, Jendra. Oh, Jendra Gray. Yeah. <laughs> Yay, Jendra. Now we'll tell Jendra that we mentioned her on this podcast. Why, why Jendra? I like Jendra. I mean, her and I, we have a social networking relationship and it's always fun, but talk about what, what type of relationship oh. you built. She and I have similar goals. Um, I feel like we're kind of like running buddies. She is the one that made me hit nine pendings because she had 10. And I was like, if she can have 10, I can get to 10 too. And my and I only hit nine so far. But that's my goal is to hit what she got. And then I'm going to try to go at least one higher. <laughs> awesome. But she's yeah, so a running buddy. But she's, we have kids. Um, she has a little girl, same age as Lainey. Um, so we just connected and we get along really well. And um, I just really like her. So. That's great. And I asked that question because a lot of times people just want to do their real estate and stay in their bubble. But it's really, really good to build relationships outside of your own brokerage and just get some ideas that you might not have heard before. And and that's what's great about, you know, Women's Council. That's what's great about other organizations, real producers, even things like that, is that you get to meet other other agents and, and have these great conversations and build friendships. So. Thank you for answering that uh, transparently. Yeah, um, so for you, um, coffee or tea? Coffee. How do you take coffee. your coffee? I like some cream in there, but I have all kinds of allergies going on. So I have to use like this special creamer and it's not mm. as good, but it is what it is. And I drink mushroom coffee now too. So I heard about that. For you and I don't get sick from it because I was getting sick from regular coffee and I was like I need my coffee I can't start my day and then I read up on it and the mushroom coffee actually does not make me sick so I can have my coffee now. Sagandaga, Saratoga, Luzerne. What's your favorite lake? Um, uh, Sagandaga. Okay, all right. Do you drink coffee after three? Yes. Okay. Yes, um, sure do. Probably shouldn't, but I do. <laughs> anywhere in the world, anywhere in the world, dream vacation home location. 
we want to go to Italy, but I don't have like any particular place in Italy. I just want to go anywhere and everywhere and eat all of the food possible because I really like, I can't eat gluten or dairy or anything like that right now. And I just want to, and I don't really drink alcohol. So I just want to go there and pretend that I'm not me. And so wait a minute, hold on, hold on. So do they have gluten-free pasta in Italy? (laughs) No, but it's not as processed as everything is here. So I have heard that it doesn't upset your stomach the way it does here. So that's why. And would you buy a vacation home there in Italy? I probably would if I could afford to go back there to vacation there, you know, frequently. Okay, so I'll just give you a tip. Tuscany. Okay. That's where you that's where you want to do it. Not Sicily, Tuscany. Um, if you could sell any celebrity's house, who would it be and why? Listen, I'm not big on celebrities. I know nothing about any celebrities. <laughs> I can't tell you. Okay. I have not a clue. I don't know I either. Not, I, I know. love Willis. I think he's adorable and mm-hmm. I love all of his action packed movies because they're the only type of movies that keep me awake. So maybe his, but like, I feel so sorry for him right now with everything he's going through. Yeah, that, like, I know. Um, beach house or a mountain cabin? Oh, man. <sighs> Depends on my mood. I would love to have a beach house because listen, the waves relax me. I miss the sunshine. I am solar powered. Mm-hmm. Um, but I would love a cabin to just go to and escape and re- just relax and have a simple life. Fixer upper or move in ready? Move in ready. <laughs> <laughs> easy. That was easy. Oh, I, I start doing projects. Listen, my house is 10 years old now and I'm starting to get to the point where I'm like, I really need to update this. I want to do that. Like we need to start doing some stuff, but I'm so chicken to mess it up. Yeah. There's so many ideas that I have in my head after like being in real estate now for eight months that I'm right. like, really want to try it, but I'm terrified to mess it up. So our last question, it's not even a question, but leave our viewers with, you know, your favorite piece of real estate advice, anything that you can think of talking to anybody, the general public, what's your favorite piece of real estate advice today? And that may change later. Um, yeah. Um, if you are going to go into real estate, I just want you to do as much research as possible and try to get yourself into, um, the meetings, try to get yourself like behind the scenes so that you can see what it's, what's really involved in it. Um, talk to as many realtors as you can and talk to them about that work-life balance and see if it really makes sense for you. Because I honestly get messages a lot from people that are going to take a real estate course and they want advice and, you know, they want to do it part-time or maybe even just do it part-time during the summer um, just to kind of supplement income. But it's been my experience that part-time would probably not be the most productive way to do it. Just it's very difficult to be successful if you're just a part-time agent. Um, I'm not saying you can't be, but I think it would be very hard to be because you're really not as available as your clients kind of expect you to be. Especially yeah. in this market. Yes. Since things you got to be available so to sell a house really quickly. So great. Well, listen, Amanda, thank you so much. Thanks uh, for having for me. On. 100%. Um, again, I like to tell people where to, where to watch this. Um, it will be on the Real Estate Happy Hour Facebook page, which is mine. You can connect through mine. Um, I'll be sharing the link with Amanda. She's going to share it a hundred times. <laughs> I'll share it a hundred times. Um, but no, join, um, like the page, Chris Wright speaks and all that. And, um, we'll just try and share it wherever we can. Cause I think this was, was really, really valuable advice. Um, this, we, we, we weren't on here just promoting ourselves. We were actually giving recommendations and advice and guidance for becoming new real estate agents. Or if you're new and you're just struggling and you can't figure it out, I think we've given some wise, you know wisdom today so yeah so thank you so much and um don't forget to like the page and uh we go from there you enjoy the rest of your day okay thanks talk soon